So how long has uh, Shinye been around? It's been around for 35 years or so. It was open because the owner wanted to kind of create a nice place for families to come and have Taiwanese food. You know, in the beginning, in the 70s, you, you would either eat at home, right? Or you would eat like street food. You know, this just looks simple, like an, an omelette. It's got uh, preserved radish in there that gives it that uh, salty and umami flavor. Well, if you watch the chef put together this in a wok, mm -hmm. it's all craft. He shapes this with just chopsticks. It doesn't have a mold, nothing. And he rocks the wok, controls the fire. And uh, I don't believe any mummy can do that. This is not really <laughs> come well, to yeah. food, but you know, they've taken yeah. this to another right. level. Yes, of course. Um, of course, back in the day when you do dishes like this, it's very humble, very simple. Yeah, at home, my parents fried. made that for us when you know we were kids in the States. and. Um, you know, that's kind of one of the dishes, like you're saying, my mom could make, obviously she couldn't make all of these dishes, but... I understand um, their intent was to take this humble, simple, um, traditional heritage food, family heritage food, to another level. Right. And they've done so. How many outlets do they have? No? Um, they have 17 in Taiwan and 7 in Taipei. And that's just for the Taiwanese food. They also have um, like a, a Japanese style buffet, which um, which we love as well. Yeah. And the and um, you know they serve this uh, they serve all this uh, dishes with this humble, really humble staple. It's uh, rice congee mm -hmm. with uh, sweet potato or taro. And why do they add taro? Back in the day, I think perhaps during the war or uh, hardship days. Um, it was difficult to get rice, so they, they added uh, ti kua, which is uh, sweet taro in there, and uh, oh, it's nice. Yeah, oh, they give so you like a big pot of it, and mm. and uh, it's good to go with all the savory dishes that we order. So you can't really come to Taiwan and uh, not leave this place without having meals like this, and if you like it uh, done in comfort, you gotta do a meal here at Xinye. They take this uh, comfort heritage dishes to another level. Yeah, if you want a taste of what locals come to eat and what locals, where locals bring their families to eat, then Xinye is definitely a good place. You heard it right here. <laughs> so this is a classic uh, Chinese kitchen. Um, how do you recognize a Chinese kitchen when you walk into one? It's the roar of the wok. Every wok is going because fire and the wok is very important. A, a typical Chinese kitchen has a few sections. There's a deep fry and roast section. There's a steam section. And there is a wok, a stir fry section. This three to four components make up the techniques that's introduced in uh, Chinese cuisine. And one of the most difficult, I understand, the most difficult sections in a Chinese uh, kitchen. And you don't get to touch this department unless you've got a, like five, even 10 years of experience in the kitchen is the steam section. It's not as easy as you think um, learning the art of steaming um, to steam a really nice fish. Um, for example, this, like a trout or a uh, barramundi. You gotta understand the fish, you gotta understand the texture, you gotta understand just how fresh that fish is so you know just how much and how long to introduce steam time into it. Deep fry department, so they fry all kinds of stuff, chicken, they're frying uh, fish cakes right now. The main section is the wok section. Well, look, the art of frying uh, is simple. Pickled daikon omelette isn't as simple as it looks. Oh, look at that. That's not easy to do at all. He lifts the omelette up and he lets some oil in so he fries it inside. So it's sort of a layering inside. It's, uh, it's airy. And that is why you don't get to be a chef in this department, the walk section, and until you've got at least five to ten years of experience. Mind you, it's just one omelette, just one dish. Let's see more other dishes now. This is 
is a very old-fashioned uh, Chinese dish. It's called three cup chicken, meaning one portion of wine, one portion of sesame oil, one portion of soy sauce, and they're gonna burn all that over a high fire and just to extract the flavors out from all that oils and uh, soy uh, with chicken. And they've got basil and there's garlic and ginger in that. So chef says uh, when you do that, you extract uh, the flavours of the garlic and the ginger before you pan fry. So there's a, uh, a, a single portion of soy sauce. A single portion of wine. There's more soy sauce. These kind of dishes the kind of stuff mum would cook at home and bring the whole family together because it's so comforting, it's so warm uh, over a bowl of rice uh, but except mum doesn't use this kind of equipment back home she used a simpler stove but the ingredients, the techniques, the approach it's all the same love so what chef is doing right now is just reducing all those flavours and uh, once it's dry and just slightly saucy enough that's when all the flavours come together chef will be introducing the uh, basil and a little bit of chilli just to give it a lip kick and that just sweet aroma of uh, basil. So I was just telling chef, uh, sometimes people use uh, lemongrass instead of basil and he says uh, it's not as popular but there are some Chinese kitchens that does this. Woo! So he's got to go for one more round of cooking. So this is a, uh, a little iron pot. Uh, traditionally people use clay pot but they use uh, steel pots here, yeah, I think the fire distribution is so much better and it's safer, it doesn't crack so often. So he wants to just uh, sear it quickly in this hot pot. Uh, it covers it. Woo! If ever there was smell of vision you'll be crying by now. Very simple uh, green dish. It's taro leaves fried very simply with uh, garlic, a little bit of uh, flavouring or, or chicken powder. But really what brings this out is how they bring the fire into the dish. So fire is a big act in the whole recipe. You can't get this if you try with your little Mickey Mouse walks at home. So the thing about this, it looks soggy, but it really isn't. If you do it, if you don't have that kind of fire, these vegetables will just go mushy. And it's not nice. So you gotta have some softness, some crunch in there. And those garlic, uh, it just permeates throughout this whole dish. It's a very comforting little plate of green to have. So this is the uh, Wa Pao. It's a steamed uh, white bun, and it's got soy braised belly pork. And out comes the bun. This is my The chili peanut. Washen. Gum chai. That's uh, salted vegetables with a bit of chili in there. Just imagine the flavors here. Just the, 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 the chili sauce, the peanut, and this uh, salted braised uh, vegetables with a hint of chili, a bit of cilantro, and then the main act a piece of belly pork. Wrap. Wrap. Why do you want to eat it? Yes. It's like a dog. Yes. It's a habit. So this is how they serve it here. They don't let uh, an aota of flavour escape. So they wrap them up. They serve you like this. So when you open it, woo! There you go. Wow, 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 wow. Can you just imagine biting into this? Uh, the salted vegetables, the chili sauce, the nuts, the, the fat, pork, gummy, sweet buns all coming together. 